Hey everyone, Professor Tomney here, and we are ready to try another unknown compound using spectroscopy. So I know these have been a favorite lately, and I will continue to put them out provided I see the interaction and the support for them. So let's go ahead and get started as we usually would. We will start with degrees of unsaturation, as always. And if you have any questions as we go along here, remember you can always um, leave a comment, and if you go over to chemcomplete.com, you can pick up the guide for $5. It's a 40-plus page guide with examples, walkthroughs, and it has all of this and more outlined there. Uh, I also offer a free course on YouTube on how to solve these, so you can check that out as well. All right, degrees of unsaturation. So we have six carbons. We're going to need two times six plus two. The oxygen would be ignored, and then there's a total of eight hydrogens. Now we have to divide that by two, and so what we end up with is 12, plus two is 14, minus eight is six, and so six divided by two is three degrees of unsaturation. So we do not have enough for an aromatic ring. We shouldn't be seeing any type of aromatic activity. So we likely have double bonds, maybe a triple bond, or a ring, but not an aromatic ring. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is take a look at the mass spec. So with the mass spec, we can confirm that we have an M plus peak of 96. So that would be the molecular weight of C6H8O. And then we would take a look at the difference here, the 96 minus the base peak of 68. And if I take a look at the difference for that, it ends up at 28. So the question is, for 28, what is a common fragment that could potentially be 28? So if you have the unknown uh, solving guide that we offer on our website for $5, in Appendix A, you can see the common ion fragments. Now, you could find this type of information online as well. You don't have to pay for this. Um, this is just directly from the guide. So 28 on the reference table is a CO, so it's a carbonyl group. So what this is suggesting is that we have a carbonyl group present somewhere in this molecule, okay? And that's really the only major fragmentation pattern we see here. There are some other uh, smaller peaks, but these are the two highlighted ones. So that's about all we're going to gather from the mass spec here. So after that, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the IR. The IR is also pretty simplistic, but there's two things we want to note. Obviously, the first one is going to be at 1685 and at 1685 a peak that is that prominent is going to be a carbonyl so at this point the mass spec and the IR have both confirmed we absolutely have a carbonyl present now the next thing and this isn't labeled but you want to pay attention to it okay at just above 3000 okay so it's not a whole lot but just above 3000 remember from the course that we have online that 3000 is the cutoff mark for the sp3 hybridized carbon so if you see peaks that go above the 3000 region it usually means you have some sort of bonding like this so you have a carbon carbon double bond and then you have a hydrogen so it's a hydrogen carbon stretch it's this bond uh, with a carbon that's attached to another uh, carbon with a pi bond. So this would suggest that we have a carbon-carbon double bond with a hydrogen present. Now this is very important because we already confirmed there are not going to be any aromatic rings, meaning no benzene rings in this case. So the fact that we have this is likely going to be evidence that we potentially have an alkene. But we need to confirm that through obviously the carbon 13 and the proton NMR. So speaking of which, now would be a good time for us to head down and take a look at the C13 NMR. All right, so for the depth, we have some very interesting information here. And what's interesting is that if you take a look at the upfield area, you have three peaks. We would obviously ignore the solvent peak. And all three of these are CH2s. So this is very useful information. We have three CH2s. 
and then we move all the way up past 120. So this would normally be what we would consider an aromatic region. However, we probably have a carbon-carbon double bond with hydrogens, right? And those two hydrogens are being shown here one apiece because they could also show up pretty far downfield due to the deshielding effects. However, we know we don't have any aromatic compounds uh, as far as benzene goes. And then if we take a look right here, this would be our carbonyl, okay, probably a ketone. It's either a ketone or an aldehyde when it shows up this high. Uh, most of the esters and amides are down closer to the 170 region, um, carboxylic acids, 180, etc. So there's something very important here, and that is we do not have any CH3, all right? So the fact that we don't have any methyl groups present means we cannot have an open chain type of structure. We have to likely have a ring. And the reason for that is if I try to do an open chain structure, I have to terminate it. And in order to terminate it, I either need CH3 groups, I would need some sort of other functional group like an alcohol or a bromine or a chlorine. But if we look at our structure up here, C6H8O, right, we've already got a lot of this accounted for. So the oxygen, one, we're going to have a carbon with an oxygen, right? So then we know we have three CH2s. So let's already take some bookkeeping here, right? If we have three CH2s and the carbonyl, that's already four carbons that we've accounted for. And then if we have three times two hydrogens, that's already six hydrogens that we've accounted for plus the oxygen. So what's left? We have two carbons left, right? And we only have two hydrogens left. So we couldn't even make CH3s or any type of terminal type of uh, ending to the chain because we don't have enough to work with here, right? Even if I was going to put a terminal carbon on each end, I, I could only give it one hydrogen. And then I'm out of everything that I have to offer as far as the mass spec is concerned. So I most definitely have to have a ring of some sort. Now, the fact that I have six carbons total and three of them are CH2s, we also know that we've got, right, this C2 and this H2 are most likely going to be what we've suggested right here the alkene portion. So how is all this going to tie in? Well, we're going to have to have a ring, and the ring is most likely going to be either a five or six-membered ring. So it is possible we could potentially have a five-membered ring with some sort of bizarre substituent coming off, but even then, if I have a substituent coming off, it can't be a CH3 group, right? It couldn't really be this double bond right here because the double bond right here it doesn't terminate well. We would need another hydrogen so it could end with a CH2. So what we're really probably looking at is a six-membered ring, right? And that ring is going to contain these different functionalities. So let's take a look at what we've got here for a further suggestion. So we know everything down in the, and we're moving on to the, the proton NMR at this point. Okay, so we know that everything that is down in the, uh, 1 to 2 ppm region, uh, or I should say probably 1 to 3 in this case, these are all going to be dealing with the CH2 groups. We wouldn't find CH2s this far uh, downfield. So these right here are optimal positioning for the alkene, right? Now, we have to start looking at some of this, okay? The fact that we've got a quintet here, which means a set of five peaks, that is usually representative of a CH2 that is in between two other CH2s. And this would make sense if we had three of them. Oops. And that also makes sense if I have a six-membered ring. Part of that ring structure is going to need to be CH2s that are directly next to one another. Because when I start looking at this, right, I've got, let's say, hydrogen, hydrogen, and then hydrogen, hydrogen. So you get the idea. I have to have, at some point, a set of CH2s. And the one that I circle here in red would specifically give the quintet, right? Because it's between two other CH2s. Now, we see some other sets here. One of them, okay, let's divide this because these are two separate signals, but they're close together. 
One of them kind of looks almost like a messy multiplet there, but the one on the left, this one, is very clearly a triplet. And a triplet is going to be a result of something that is next to a CH2. So again, this makes sense, uh, and we need to figure out where the rest of this is going to be coming from. All right, now, if you think about what's left, I still have to have a carbonyl. The only option for a carbonyl at this point is going to be to put it on the ring. So I would have to determine where I'm going to put it. And the carbonyl should likely be closer to this set of protons. And the reasoning behind that is they're further downfield. So it only makes sense that it would be next to that set that we have right there. Okay, And I'll go ahead and place this right here. So what we are suggesting is that this, now let me use a different color so you guys can follow along. Now I'm going to do it in green. This set of protons right here, okay, are going to be associated with this right here because they are the furthest of the three CH2s downfield, which means they have the most deshielding. And that would make sense if they're directly next to this electronegative group right here. All right, so we turn around and we then would say, well, what do we have left? We have to include the alkene and by default we really only have one spot to put it which is right here and there would be an H coming off here and an H coming off here and that would result in what we see right here okay and again using some different colors here it's important to differentiate why are these two peaks so far apart well this one right here is going to be in close proximity to the carbonyl so it would have more deshielding and we would expect it to be the one that appeal or appears in the more deshielded region it's going to be further downfield all right and then if we take a look at the general integration here the general integration is going to be if this is two right this is a ch2 this one which is integrating both of these signals together is about double the height so that's four and that makes sense because this is including right this one right here is this peak and you get some of the weird splitting because of this uh, neighboring alkene because uh, remember that alkenes can have cis and trans type behavior and so you can get some weird splitting patterns and uh, different coupling constants that come out of that all right and then if we come and we look here these are about half the size of that original two integration all right so if I look at this this integration is about half of this integration right here so I would safely assume that each of these are one and all of this comes together to support the structure that I have now proposed so this would be the correct final structure let's write it out one more time in a clean area so that everybody can follow along okay and I'm gonna just delete a little bit of the work we did here so the final structure as confirmed by all of the spectroscopy would be this cycloalkene. Okay, so hopefully everybody found this walkthrough useful. As always, if you comment or if you have your own uh, spectra that you want to have presented on the channel, if you send me the materials and contact me, uh, I would be more than happy to do a user video provided I have the time and the materials are quality enough in terms of the ability to show them uh, on the screen. Um, as always, if you subscribe, you'll be up to date. Like the video if it was helpful. And again, just a shout out, go over to chemcomplete.com, check out the YouTube series that we have that is for the entire uh, spectroscopy solving course. And this guide, okay, it's got, look at all the walkthrough here. It's 40 pages, it's got tables, it's got examples, it's got visuals. I took a lot of time to put this together. It is only $5 and you will have the complete walkthrough guide, okay, that complements the course we offer along with these types of solving problems. So head on over and get yours at Chem Complete for $5. It supports the channel so that I can keep doing this type of stuff for you guys. And other than that, I hope everybody has a fantastic day. And as always, thank you so much for learning with us. Take care, guys.